Wayne Madsen joins us from WayneMadsenReport.com. He's been very busy. We've been very busy, but we're finalizing the fact that he'll do multiple stories a month on the ground, traveling the world for us uh, here in the U.S. and abroad. He'll also accompany myself and other reporters uh, to add his uh, gravitas to what they're doing. So it is now happening. Wayne Madsen joins the InfoWars team. And that, again, is thanks to your support uh, and, and the fact that he's also accommodated us uh, and basically is just doing it for the expenses. In fact, he didn't really want to be paid. He just wanted his expenses paid. That's, he, uh, that's how much he realizes how serious this is and how committed this is. I mean, don't, don't think later, oh, my gosh, I wish I would have realized how real this was. This is hardcore, folks. Tyranny is now naked. Now, Wayne, I just ranted for five, six minutes so don't don't pause or I'll start interrupting you. You've got the floor. You're investigating this dead chef of the Clintons. Uh, you're you're an expert on McCain. Uh, you know Trump. I'm not even defending Trump, but he's saying he's no hero. Boy, he didn't know how true that is. Uh, and of course, you've got new NSA info. Uh, so much uh, intel. But the word is the missing chef that was then found dead on his body. He had a letter saying, contact Larry Nichols if I'm found dead, whatever that means. Uh, so, Wayne Madsen, thank you so much for joining us. Good to be with you, Alex. Uh, well, uh, you know, every once in a while, there's a, a dead body turns up, and, you know, dead bodies are always turning up. Sometimes there's not, no story there, but I believe there may be a story with uh, the former White House executive chef, Walter Scheib, and the reason I feel so is, uh, he, yes, he was hired by Hillary Clinton in 1994. He had been the executive chef at the Greenbrier. And anyone who knows about uh, how the government would react uh, in, the nu in the event of a nuclear war during the Cold War knows that the Greenbrier Resort and Hotel on the West Virginia, Virginia line uh, also happened to have housed behind it where Congress would go in the event of a nuclear attack. And uh, chef uh, Scheib was the executive chef at that resort. He was hired from that resort. So he knew a little bit about the uh, government continuity of government, and continuity of operations planning, because he, of course, would have had to have been providing the food for a transfer of the Congress to the underground mountain complex. Uh, and why I'm saying this is this all has a bearing on 9-11, uh, because uh, uh, when uh, George W. Bush took over, uh, that administration kept uh, uh, Walter Scheib on as the executive chef. Uh, he, he was on until the Bush re-election in 04, and then in January of 05, he was given his walking papers. Uh, it would have been nice to have uh, heard just one of the mainstream media uh, reporters to have actually read um, uh, Walter Scheib's book called White House Chef, which I decided... <laughs> I didn't have it. I ordered it uh, thinking, well, I wonder what he may have written that may have put a, uh, a target on his back. And now, before I read the book, um, I went back because uh, I, I re distinctly remembered from the 9-11 footage. You remember all the people were running out of the White House. It was a very it was uncontrolled. It looked like one of these Hollywood disaster movies. Sort of like Independence Day. And I recall one of the people running away from the White House that day had a, a big, tall chef's hat on. And I said, well, that's obviously somebody that works in the White House uh, kitchen. And it turned out it was Walter Scheib, who then gave an interview to Rebecca Cooper of ABC News, who recounted her conversation. You can find this clip on the Internet, on YouTube. Uh, with the, she recounted her conversation with Peter Jennings, and she said, "I I ran into the uh, White House chef, and uh, he, he was very very upset. He was too upset to talk on the air. All he said is uh, he and his staff understood what happened to the country that day. Now that's a very strange thing to say because nobody re else really knew what was going on. I was in D.C. I was two miles from the Pentagon when it happened." Nobody really understood what was going on. But in reading uh, Walter Scheib's book here, it's very interesting what happened because he had a very tortuous relationship with the Bush administration. Uh, not so much uh, W, who decided he didn't want to use the talents of a uh, graduate of the CIA. I don't mean the Central Intelligence Agency. 
I mean, the Culinary Institute of America. But uh, uh, I wonder what secrets of the C of the other CIA uh, Chef Shai may have possessed, because um, on 9-11, he first he uh, left the White House and then he realized uh, how bad the situation was. And there was no organized evacuation of the White House. And then he heard crackling over the Secret Service walkie talkies incoming aircraft. And he went back to uh, rescue his own uh, staff from the White House kitchen. He left again. He, and then someone said, uh, he said uh, what about the uh, cafeteria? Well, th th that's the Navy mess in the White House. And they don't report to the White House chef, uh, that their Navy personnel. But he went back in a second time to make sure that the, uh, the, the, the cooks at, at the uh, mess were, uh, got the word to get out. And what he was what he was struck about uh, was there was no organized evacuation of the White House. No one gave the order to evacuate. Now, who was in charge that day? Bush was off in Florida. Dick Cheney was effectively the person in charge at the White House. And he did nothing to, to uh, organize or order a, a, an evacuation of the White House staff. Wasn't he in the bunker? Yeah, he was in the bunker at this time, the President's Emergency Operations Center, which is below the White House, several stories below the White House. And um, so uh, what happened was when 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 uh, Shine first realized uh, what was going on with 9-11, he said he walked into the uh, the chief usher's office. Now, the chief usher was a guy named Gary Walters. He had been Secret Service, uniform Secret Service under Nixon, and then he became the uh, 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 an usher under Gerald Ford and uh, assistant usher under Gerald Ford, and then in, uh, the Reagan administration made him the chief usher. So he had served under like seven presidents. And he, he noticed that the ushers were watching the television, a small television, and he said, what's going on? And he saw uh, flames or uh, smoke coming out of one of the World Trade Center towers. And and um, and then he, he said uh, he saw the, the second plane hit. And, and the chief usher, Gary Walters, at that point said, that's two. And he said, uh, uh, the chef said, that echoed in his mind. What in the world? What, you know, that's two. That's a very strange thing to say. Like, what was what was so important about the number two? Uh, and then later, of course, he told Rebecca Cooper, um, uh, we understand what's happening to the country today. Now, let's fast forward. Um, June 15th, Jeb Bush announces he's running for president in Miami. On June 16th, uh, uh, Scheib, who had uh, since been divorced, was with his girlfriend in Taos, New Mexico. He went, decided to go hiking on a, uh, a trail outside of Taos. On the 16th, his uh, girlfriend reported him missing. And on the 22nd of June, the New Mexico State Police found his body in a, uh, in a ravine that had been, uh, he was in water. Of course, anybody knows that if a body's found in water, you can pretty much rule out the toxicology results because they're uh, corrupted by uh, the simple process of osmosis. And uh, so here we have Jeb uh, announcing and the chef who had, a, like I say, had, did not have a very good uh, relationship with the Bush family, um, uh, turns up dead in New Mexico. And is this just another uh, person who may have known too much about 9-11, may have known too much about the inner workings of the Bush crime family uh, and uh, was he eliminated uh, because uh, of his knowledge, especially at this critical juncture of Jeb announcing he's going to run uh, uh, for the White House to be the third President Bush? Please continue. So uh, anyway, I, 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 my, <laughs> my, uh, my suspicions are uh, are heightened about the the cause of death. Uh, uh, again, it was one of these where the. Uh, New Mexico State Police immediately said it was an accident. I mean, before the autopsy results are in, how many times have we seen this? We saw, saw I, I, you know, when I investigated the Phil Marshall uh, death out in California, again, we had these preconceived uh, uh, notions by law enforcement that it was suicide uh, before, you know, uh, they knew any of the real facts on the, you know, from the crime scene. And um, I, I'm, um, I, I just... Looking at all the, the long, long trail of bodies associated with the Bush family, um, and I've been investigating these deaths for several decades, I have to come to the conclusion that Chef Shive was... Well, uh, I mean, how many cleaning ladies and maids and cooks end up dying at their houses? Yeah, Marvin Bush's maid was run over by her own car. 
<laughs> I shouldn't laugh. It's just ridiculous. Stay with us. Some of the news breaking at Infowars.com. You can't make this up. Feminist not allowing your wife to sleep with other men is sexist, but you don't cheat on her. She'll tell me all about how she had, she and Pablo had sex, and I'm glad because I'm a feminist. <laughs> And the New York Times is so intellectual, they had a big spread about women with different colored arm hair, pink, blue, green. I mean, this is just the mindlessness. All are robbed by offshore banks. They have us all fighting with each other. Black sheriff has come out and said Obama downplayed Chattanooga because victims didn't look like Trayvon. Look, here's where I stand. I want Wayne Madsen's take on this. And then in overdrive, we'll get into John McCain. I expose that uh, Al-Qaeda was synthetic, pretty much fake, a cutout to take our liberties. But now funding the Free Syrian Army, letting them recruit, it's a Saudi Arabia proxy army, and it's going to have some blowback that are going to be real shootings in the West. Now, does the government go out sometimes and wind up mentally ill people to go run attacks? Absolutely. But after we have the shooter in Charleston, we hear that whites are to collectively blame. Well, then are Muslims collectively blamed? And I satirically said, let's ban all mosque and Muslims if we're going to ban all rebel flags. I don't actually want to ban the mosque or Muslims. It was a point. That if somebody uses a Bushmaster gun, we then sue Bushmaster. Well, you know, it, it's it's totalitarianism is what it is. But Wayne Madsen, what is your view on the Chattanooga situation uh, and where all that's going? Because they're now setting up a domestic homeland security bureau to look for lone wolf extremists. But I don't expect they're actually going to go out and, uh, you know, stop any of these acts. It looks more like a domestic police state. Well, of course, I think that this uh, attack in Chattanooga, let's look to look let, what kind of individual did we have here? We had a guy who uh, was uh, a, 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 had been a national of Kuwait, um, had uh, apparently grown up in Jordan at one point in time and visited Jordan, had also visited Yemen. So we're, we hear a lot about profiling people. I get I get the third degree when I travel especially overseas or coming back from overseas by TSA. It sounds like this guy was just traveling willy-nilly without anyone asking any questions. And, uh, yeah, I agree that he's a terrorist, but uh, I have to then look at why was this particular attack conducted when it was. We do know that Saudi Arabia, along with Israel, is totally opposed to this uh, nuclear deal uh, by the P5 plus one countries with Iran. And 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 at the time, and now I hear on the Fox News is all these neocons saying, "You see, you see, by helping, uh, by having this pact with Iran, it it, it it's enabling the somehow enabling these terrorists, these sleepers in the United States." Well, this guy is a follower, of the, obviously, of the Wahhabist uh, Salafist sect of Islam. Iran happens to be diametrically opposed. They are Shias. And uh, they're as much a target as anyone else are by these Saudi fanatics. Well, that so shows how dumb they think the public is, is that they're always blaming Iran for Wahhabist activities when the two are arch enemies. Yeah, and remember, George W. Bush, when he was president, said he didn't know there was a difference between Sunnis and Shias, okay? So, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> what we were dealing with then. And uh, and But I think Obama certainly knows the difference, so I have to think that this... Failure by him to basically state that this was an act of terrorism in the same manner. Now, it doesn't mean that it was not uh, known about in advance by uh, certain people, especially, say, the Saudi government. And we've been, I heard uh, the previous segment with uh, Bill Binney talking about the 28 pages, but uh, the Saudis are over their, in over their heads on uh, supporting these acts of terror. And, uh, and attacking a recruiting center in Chattanooga would be just uh, down their alley. And then now the king of Saudi Arabia had an entire giant beach in the south of France cleared of beachgoers in front of their hotels because he didn't want to look at them. I mean, this is just its just a total joke. This, this, this fraud that is royalty that we have to bow down to. Back in 70 seconds in Overdrive with Wayne Madsen, I'm Alex Jones. WayneMadsenReport.com is his website. You are listening to GCN. Have you told anybody about InfoWars.com today? today? They don't want that info getting out, folks. Get it out. We are back live. Final segment. We're with Wayne Madsen. Wayne, John McCain, I mean, you, you've talked about him. I, I could go over his history, his past, the Keating Five, all of it. The fact that he's just a globalist all the way. But 
Trump comes out and says because he got captured, that's not a hero. Well, I mean, it's heroic to fly off the decks of boats and have that courage. I mean, I think that was a stupid comment. But boy, what if Trump really knew about McCain? I mean, all the stuff he did, being a trustee at the Hanoi Hilton. Can you give us the data dump on McCain? Yeah, quickly. Uh, yesterday, July 19th, was the uh, anniversary of the worst fire in the history of the U.S. Navy. In 19, uh, July 19th, 1967, the USS Forrestal uh, had a, a, a terrible fire on, the, on its flight deck. Uh, 100, uh, over, well over 100 uh, sailors were killed. Many others were burned horribly. Uh, back in the uh, 2008 campaign, I met with some of the people who were on the Forrestal, and they uh, conveyed a, a story that was uh, uh, incredible that McCain, who they said was... Uh, 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 of course, uh, injured because he was in his aircraft on the flight deck when the fire broke out, that he was, his nickname was called Johnny Wet Start. And a wet start is where uh, a guy on the flight deck would basically rev his engines. And then you know how you shake a lighter and then you, you, you flick, it, flick it and you get like a big flame shoots out. Well, it, apparently it was possible to do that with his, uh, his aircraft, his A4 aircraft. And and, um, and and so um, uh, the, the, there was an issue that McCain and the CEO of the Forest Hall, Captain Belling, were using 1935 bombs, thousand pound bombs, because you get more bang for your buck when you drop these things over Hanoi or Haiphong. Uh, other people said, look, they're unstable. It's 1935 mun uh, munitions. They use a safer 500 pound bomb. And, uh, and uh, McCain, who wore his daddy's rank, his dad was uh, a commander of the Pacific uh, Fleet. Uh, he decided, uh, no, no, I want to use a thousand pound bombs. And, uh, and so he and the CO basically conspired uh, to keep using these. So when uh, McCain uh, uh, did this uh, Johnny Wet Start maneuver, apparently cooked, it cooked off a, a Zuni rocket that was in the plane. Uh, behind his. Now, uh, the Navy Court of Inquiry shows footage of, no, oh, that's impossible. McCain's plane was, uh, the the, the uh, back of it was uh, parked out to the sea. So nothing could have, he couldn't have done anything uh, like that. Well, look, the Navy handled the Board of Inquiry. And one thing I know about the United States Navy, having served in the Navy, 10 years of active duty and four years in the reserves, is that the one thing they excel at is cover-ups. I've seen more acts of cover-ups in the Navy than acts of heroism. And, uh, and what the Navy Court of Inquiry did in that case of the Forrestal fire was to exonerate McCain, uh, make sure that n nothing stuck to him. As a matter of fact, he was the first uh, sailor uh, uh, taken off of the um, Forrestal and, and helicoptered over to the Oriskany because people on the Forrestal, I was told by crewmen, knew what he had done. And wanted to, uh, basically wanted to um, have a piece of Johnny Wet Start uh, after they saw their friends blown off the flight deck and horribly burned. Uh, so uh, I, I just wonder whether Donald Trump uh, 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 knew about the, uh, the the significance of yeah, July. Yeah, and by the way, this has even been in mainstream news a decade ago. This is known, and then I've had the people on. It's come out about how he was a trustee at the Hanoi Hilton, who got women, good, uh, yeah. good food, everything. Yeah, and that he, uh, I was told by people uh, in, in, during the OA campaign, some of whom were POWs in, in Vietnam, North Vietnam, said he, he was singing like a canary that he gave six months worth of Navy operational flights, you know, planning schedules to the North Vietnamese uh, for better treatment. So it's worse than Trump said. It's not that he's not a hero, he's a traitor. Yeah, it's worse. <laughs> He's, we know this. He's a piece of work. Wayne Madsen, thank you so much for your time. Nightly News is tonight, 7 o'clock Central.